Hey guys, it's Robin, R. Simon Crafts, and welcome to my studio. This is my Whip It Wednesday video where I show you what I've been creating in the past week. Believe last Friday's tutorial was the log cabin, where we just made a simple quilt as you go, and the only quilting is when we actually stitched it down to our batting and faux backing. This is not the backing of my project, if you recall. And I also did the one with the visible quilting, where you can see all the fun matchstick quilting lines on there. And the back is a crazy mess, but I love all the lines. For those of you that may be new today, I am doing Quilt As You Go blocks to make a sewing machine mat, something to go underneath my machine to keep it a little quieter. But if it's just me, I don't mind, but it's also gonna help out on the live streams. And during those lives, I like to take my sewing machine and drag it across and slide it back and forth on the table for better viewing. So having the mat underneath it is going to be nice. I've had various other mats underneath it, but I thought it'd be fun to do a quilt as you go one and show you guys various quilt as you go blocks. And then we'll put it together. I also did a quilt as you go block with my patrons, something just a little bit different, but with tons of quilting lines on it. I've decided to do one with novelty fabrics like this, and then I'm gonna do another sewing machine mat with the various colors. Now this one is actually larger than the rest. This guy is going to be turned into a tote bag. Then I started working on some upcoming videos, trying to get a little bit ahead of the game here. And we're going to be doing a string block. This time I did just a little bit of top stitching on it. We're gonna be making the project similar to our log cabin where our only quilting is gonna be when we stitch it down but I thought we would go ahead and add a little top stitching too, just so you could see how that looks a little bit different. So we have the double quilting lines on the back. And for those of you that are unfamiliar, I have a Patreon page. It's linked down below in the description box. It's another way to support the channel. There's various benefits that come with it, but one of the biggest benefits is every Sunday, you get some form of a video from me. The majority of the time it's some type of a tutorial, but I might just do something where I record the video while I'm creating something. I do tours in when my garden, when I'm planting things or how things are growing. Chitty chatty videos. There's just a variety of things. It's kind of a free for all over there. So if you want, go ahead and check it out down there. There's different tiers that you can choose to support the channel. Sometimes I like to do the Patreon video to be similar to the one I did on YouTube with different twists. So on Friday, I did the string block. I don't believe I recorded making this one, but I think I showed it on the Friday video. I've just been going crazy and making a whole bunch of tutorial videos and I'm slowly editing them so I can't remember exactly which is in what, but you're gonna be seeing these projects coming up soon. So I did do the whole bunch of matchstick quilting so that it would go with this project. And then over on my Patreon channel, we did the string blocks and we did them a little bit different. So we have smaller blocks and we did the matchstick quilting everywhere with the center motif. I love to have the little diamond in there. It just as a little reminder, I do still have the quilt as you go hexagon log cabins that are going to be worked into this one. So as you can see, there's been a lot of quilt as you go progress going on here. I've been really enjoying it each week. But this week coming up on Friday, you're going to get a little bit of a different tutorial. I showed you guys the folded, pinched, pleated, however you want to call it. There's a different name I've got coming up for it. I believe I call it the folded, pleated bottom bag or something like that. Anyway, we're going to make this. I'm going to just put tassels on it with you guys. Got it all nicely lined. This is the bag that I saw several months ago on Instagram and Crafty Gemini put up a tutorial recently for a leather version, but hers wasn't lined and I wanted a lined bag. So it has this nice little feature here on the bottom of the bag. So you get this little folded piece that comes up. I like that little extra detail that you get and then over on my Patreon page, we're gonna work with sloths. Again, a nice little tassel to go with it. I love when I can find tassels that actually match the bag in some way or another. I put a blue one on because I wanted to pull the blue out of this bag. And on this side, we've got a blue Vesta that we could pull that out. And then I thought this one matched pretty good with the sloths. 
And this one, I did the folded bottom. So this one has a bottom when you put it down, it does still stand up like this. And when you fold it, you can kind of really see that the bottom is going to be there. This one folds pretty flat because the bottom is actually tucked inside. It still has a lining in it. So when you put your items in it, this bottom is going to open up. And the bottom just pops out. And then the following week, we're going to get back into the quilt as you go. And I believe that's when you are going to see the string blocks. So for those of you who've been around for a while, I try to get ahead on my videos. So many times on the Whip It Wednesdays, you're going to see future videos, future tutorial projects coming up. So you just have to be patient because sometimes if I get several weeks ahead, you might see something that's not going to show up for six or eight weeks, but you'll see it on a Whip It Wednesday now. So maybe each week as I show the project, I'll go ahead and put it down below in the description box when you're going to see it so you know which Friday coming up you can expect it. So if you're really excited to see the pouches, you'll see these this Friday. If you were really excited to see the string blocks, those will be showing up the following Friday and you'll have a good idea of when they're coming. Somebody shared this really cute fabric with me. This fabric actually came from the Dollar Tree. The Dollar Tree has been coming out with some more fun fabric. Sometimes it's just a simple fabric, like the lining actually came from the Dollar Tree also. So sometimes you just get a simple type of a semi-solid background type fabric, and other times you get a fun novelty one. I've still been doing some knitting at night. I have only worked a little bit on my sweater. I've worked uh, quite a bit on Robbie's socks and stuff. I'll show those at a later date. But one of the things I had to do is I needed to get this dish cloth off of the needles because I needed the needles that I use for this. It's a nice size five short needle, but there was a dish cloth on it and it was probably about this far. So I did finish this. I'm not actually getting back into knitting dish cloths right at the moment. I will be soonish, maybe later in the summer, but you're seeing that because I really just needed it off the needles. And the thing that I needed to make was this adorable little sweater. Now this probably would fit a little micro preemie or preemie baby, but this is actually going to be going to a little girl who took the sweater off of the knit stuffed giraffe that I made her when she was born. And she took the sweater off of the giraffe and put it on another stuffed animal. So mama asked if I could make another sweater. This one, I have a feeling it's going to be a little big. I don't have the giraffe in front of me. Let me see if I can put up some pictures here if they'll actually show so you can see Miss Gelato Giraffe from Kay Jones of the Bakery Bears. So I just went by the needle size that I marked down on Ravelry and I used a thin yarn, stitched it a little bit tight. So I don't know if I used kind of thinking I use the four on the giraffe and the size five on the sweater, but it could be opposite. But if it's a little big, I told my son that just tell his friend that if it's a little big, tell the little girl to take the sweater off of the stuffed toy and put it back on the giraffe and then put this sweater on the stuffed toy. I've definitely been wanting to create crocheted and knit stuffies more often now. Again, I've got to get through a few projects and get some videos made up ahead of time, and then I will be able to start bringing some more crochet projects in and stuff like that. I want to get that sweater done. I'm up at the yoke of it, so I would really like to get it finished. I'm getting close, but I have started the cables, and lately I've been a little tired at night, so I just didn't want to fall asleep while doing the cables. So I'll save that for probably next week when I get back into it. My sleep cycle, I'm sure you guys all have the same problem, or most of you do, where you can sleep really great for a while, and then for whatever reason, you don't sleep well. So I haven't been sleeping very long at night, so maybe about four or five hours, and I seem to wake up during that time, so then you're not getting good quality sleep. I can function on five hours as long as I get a nap during the day, but when I constantly waking up every hour or so, you're not sleeping very well. Now, one of you amazing people was very generous and shared some of your yo-yos with me. We were discussing how she likes to make yo-yo garlands. Yo-yo. 
Yo-yo's kind of fun to say. I loved yo-yos as a kid, the regular toy. And I went through a phase where I made a bunch of yo-yos. There are different patterns where you can sew them together and make like a monkey and stuff. So I went crazy making yo-yos once. I did make a yo-yo clown and I did make all of the yo-yos for the monkey, but then they never got put together. So these are fun. You can look at them and hang them in either direction. So she was sweet enough to actually make the yo-yos for me. I love that fabric. It's striped here, and look at that, how it turns out there. These are great for such a variety of things. They do make a beautiful garland. They would be nice on a large Christmas tree, make them a little bit smaller and put them on a smaller Christmas tree. I've seen them in different hair accessories for the little girls. You can make really tiny ones and turn them into necklaces. She was even sweet enough to send me the cotton thread string whatever to go with it i have beads that go in between so you string them up put some beads on and then string them like that i'm going to sit on this for just a little bit i've had a couple ideas that have popped into my head i'll either hang them up here in the studio as a decoration to go up with some of my quilts i could hang them up on my curtains or something up on a wall across a bookcase or I might do something else with them. I haven't decided yet, but I have plenty to play with. Oh, by the way, this sweater, it does actually unbutton and open up and turn into a cardigan to easily put it on a little draft. It's got little arms that can go through there. I really think this is gonna be too big, but better to be too big than to be too small. I can always knit up another one. I still have more of this yarn. It's a really fun yarn. It's variegated, and when I did the buttons, I've got a dark purple, a green, and a light purple and green yarn that's going through. When I do my buttons, I just take the yarn from the project, and I take it apart, and I separate them, and then I use one or two of these individual strands to sew the buttons on. That way you're using a nice sturdy yarn, and it blends in with the project nicely. So that's it for me this week. That's what I have been working on. Go ahead and leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you're working on this week. Or are you guys all into the garden? It's coming into the beginning. Well, by the time you see this, it's June 2nd. It's my son, my oldest son's Justin's birthday. Happy birthday, Justin. He doesn't watch. But I heard it from many of you across the states here, and I've seen it on the YouTube videos that once we get into June, past June 2nd or June 5th or something, that you guys are past the frost danger. I've heard that some people possibly got some snow at the end of May. That's kind of scary. But y'all should be starting to get your gardens going. Some people are harvesting already. I planted some radish seeds the other day, and I was really happy that they popped up in like two days. They really, I was really surprised. So I really love radishes, but a lot of times when you get them at the store, they're big and they're starting to get wrinkled and they're old and they, they just don't have a fresh taste. Sometimes they don't taste like anything at all. Farmer's markets are kind of rare down here. A little bit hit and miss. And when you do, a lot of times it's just things they didn't send to the grocery stores. It's like the big farms and that's really great and I'm glad that they're bringing the produce, but it seems like it's exactly the same thing I can get at the store. It doesn't feel or taste or look like it just came out of the ground this past week. We used to be able to go to a flea market and they had a lot of produce stands there and you know you it was fresh. It had really great flavor. The things that were supposed to be crisp were crisp, like the lettuces and the cucumbers and the radishes. So I thought, you know what, I love radishes in my salad. I eat salads every day throughout the year, really, mostly in the summer, but throughout the year. And the radishes, they don't need to get very big for me, so I just planted them in a little container. So even if they're only like this big, I'm perfectly happy with it, just enough to slice up and add to my salad. We're really lucky down here in Florida that we can actually grow produce year-round. So the, one of the next things on my list is going to get some lettuce planted. That way, whenever I want some on a sandwich or some for a salad, I can just go right out the front door, pick some of the lettuce, clean it up, chop it up, and I'll have a really fresh salad that way. So that's it. I hope everyone has a wonderful week, and I'll see you guys in the next video.
But for my super fans, those of you guys that are hanging out wondering, where is your code, Robin? I'm sneaking it really at the end of the video, past the goodbye. So for all those people that just kind of watch for a little bit and then they dip out when I start chattering and they don't want to hear any more, that's fine. I don't mind. So for all of you that hang out to the end, I'm not going to give you a code that's based on anything that we're working on here. I don't want anyone to accidentally use it in their comment. Your code for today's video is going to be full moon. We had a really good super red flower moon or something this month. So that in May, it was really great. But this video, I'm going to be giving away things. So I told you guys before that I'm going to randomly pull names for anyone who's been using the code word. So today's video, I'm warning you ahead of time so that if you don't always use the code word, but if you want to win something, this is the one. Now let me show you what you're going to win. So remember I had these little triangle bits left over from one of these style pouches that I made. I was going to turn it into maybe a coin pouch or something, but then I thought, you know what? I'm going to turn them into fabric postcards. I'm going to fold this down, fold this back so that it's just the triangles. Or I might leave a little bit of the white showing, and I'm going to add it onto a fabric postcard. I have one. Again, I'm going to put the black one on here. And since I've already chopped off part of it, that's why I was thinking about folding it back. Do some type of fancy stitching to hold it down, too. And then I got this little baby guy also. So I'll put it on three. I have this blue fabric that I really like. So I thought it would be nice for a fabric postcard. It's more of a, maybe a linen or an outdoor fabric. It's really firm. It's not a regular quilting cotton type fabric. So I'm going to turn these into fabric postcards. This is going to be for anyone internationally within the United States, anywhere that you can accept mail that I can mail you a postcard. I'm going to go ahead and mail one. So I'm going to draw three names. And I'm going to draw them really soon, like tomorrow morning, Thursday morning, when I wake up and I come into my studio here and I get started for the day, which is usually around 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'm going to go ahead and pull three names. I'm going to reply to the comment that you leave below this video. And then these three postcards, I'll finish them up by then and I will send them out to you. But for those of you, don't worry if you watch the video later on in the week. The following Wednesday, when I work, when I wake up next Wednesday, June 9th, I'm going to go ahead and draw two more names of some fabric postcards that I already have made. So if you watch this later in the week, I don't want anyone to miss out, so you'll have a full week. But the thing is, is you've got to have like maybe notifications on so that you know when I reply to your comment. You can come back tomorrow sometime, maybe around lunchtime, and check to see if I replied to your comment as you're the winner. I'll say something like, you know, you're the winner, congratulations, please send me your mailing address. You'll want to send it to my rsislandcrafts at gmail.com email address. It's the one listed down below that I say, hey, if you want to talk to me and send me something, you know, chitter chatter in a conversation, use this email. Because the other one I don't pay attention to as much. Most of that goes into spam. It's just a junk email that I use for my PayPal because I've had it forever. Whew, lots of words today. And then for those of you who are listening to this later on, come back next Wednesday, June 9th around lunchtime and see if I reply to your comment. The last time I did this, I had a handful of people that never sent me their mailing address. Handful, maybe three of them, four of them. So you guys are going to miss out. If I don't hear from you in about a week's time, then I'm just going to consider it that you didn't want it. You didn't check your comment. You didn't check your... I don't know if YouTube emails you when someone replies to your comment. It will be in your notifications on your YouTube page. So if you click on, I think it's the little bell up at the top, and it'll notify what videos are coming up, and then if anyone replied to your comment. So you can always check there also. If I don't from hear from anyone who has had their name drawn, these will just go into the pot for next time. The two that I'm doing for next week were leftovers from what people didn't respond last time. And as soon as I hear from you, as long as these are made, they will go in the mail the next day. Like I said, international or regular. Thank you for being a super fan and always hanging out to the end of the video. Thank you for leaving a code word in your comments. I enjoy seeing the theme going down through the comments. Makes it real easy to pick out who hangs out to the end of the video. So I hope you have an amazing week and I'll see you on Friday when we are doing these pouches. And I even show you how to add a little tassel. Thank you for your support. Bye.